Dismantling a Stuart Victoria steam plant, this one's part two. A closer look at the Scotch return tube boiler and the water gauge is not working correctly. The problem with this boiler is I know nothing about it. I bought it as part of a steam plant. I gave the boiler a hydraulic test up to £120 per square inch when I first bought it and it passed with flying colours. Now I'm taking a closer look, I'm noticing things like there is a bit of corrosion on the aluminium washers on the check valves. These two check valves that are on screen at the moment are old Stuart check valves. By far my favourite type of check valve because they have inspection plugs that you can remove to allow you to poke a piece of wire through to clear any blockage. And in old boilers, blockages are fairly frequent. It's usually lime scale. I'm not concerned with the check valves for the moment, but I am concerned with the water gauge that doesn't seem to work. On the water gauge fitting that's silver soldered to the boiler, there are two quite large inspection plugs. I've poked a piece of silver solder wire through the bottom one, now I'm removing the top one. And to my surprise, when I remove the top inspection plug, the water runs freely out of the bottom plug hole. I think I'd better rephrase that. What I mean is the water runs freely out of the hole in the bottom part of the fitting. But there is still something wrong. I've removed the tap and now I'm pushing a piece of silver solder wire all the way through. And when I check how much silver solder wire I'm pushing into this, you can see it's plenty. And for a belt and braces approach, I'm using a screwdriver just to check that it is all the way through. But there's nothing running out from the bottom fitting unless I take out the inspection plug on the top one. What makes this a little more puzzling is the water level in the water gauge is moving up and down slightly. So you would think everything is OK, but it is not. In this clip, you can see that I've replaced both of the inspection plugs in the water gauge mounting, which is actually part of the boiler. And when I remove the top cap of the water gauge, a small amount of water starts to drip out of the bottom of the water gauge where I've removed the tap. But when I remove the main blanking plug, a lot more water pours out of this hole, and that's what I would expect to come out of the water gauge bottom fitting. So there is something wrong with the water gauge. It's a bit academic, really, because I'm going to change it for a better one. But I think I have a good idea what it is. I've just been on the phone to Blackgates Engineering to see if I can get a three-cock water gauge to fit in place of this one. I left a message on the answer phone and spoke to Heather, who should get back to me shortly. The general idea with this boiler is to give it a thorough overhaul and improve it. Looking at the way this boiler's built, it has a flavour of being a commercial item. It looks to me like the return tube cover assembly is a casting. So if anyone out there actually knows what this boiler is exactly, please let me know. Here I'm double checking, and both of the holes in the rectangular blocks are perfectly clear all the way into the boiler. I've removed the aluminium washers from the two inspection plugs, and I'm replacing them with copper. Before fitting the copper washers and replacing the plugs, I've cleaned up the front surfaces of both of the water gauge mountings using some Scotch-Brite. This clip shows both of the blanking plugs refitted, and they now have copper washers. I'm having a quick look at other parts of the boiler. This is the main boiler out tap after the superheater, and it's a Stuart type, which is fitted with a plastic hand wheel to stop you from burning your fingers. I think I'm going to replace this with something a little better looking. This next clip has given me a little bit of food for thought. It's a partially completed triple expansion engine behind the boiler. And as you can see, I think this would be a good combination if I fitted it into a large radio control model boat. I would have to modify the way the reversing lever worked. And also, as this is a triple expansion engine, it isn't self-starting. So making the engine self-start could be a bit of a problem. I don't know how well it would work if I fitted a simpling valve to let high-pressure steam into the high and low-pressure cylinder, because these two cranks are not at 90 degrees. Later on in the triple expansion rebuild, I'll try applying compressed air to the high-pressure and low-pressure cylinder and see what happens. If all else fails, though, I'm still going to go ahead and use this boiler with the triple expansion engine. It would look pretty neat mounted in a glass case. 
In this clip, I'm refilling the boiler with some clean water, and as you can see, this is unusual. I'm getting air bubbles in the gauge glass. I'm having a deja vu with this one. A similar problem occurred with my 4.5-inch scale showman's engine. I'll look at this in detail, along with some other things in the next episode. Here I'm retightening the safety valve after filling the boiler, after which I connect a compressed air line to one of the check valves. And when I apply air to the boiler, and then open the water gauge blowdown valve, look what happens. As you can see, the water's been blown out of the fitting, but look at it, it's all white and frothy on the bench. This is not right at all, but I'll keep you guessing till the next episode. Today is Wednesday the 16th of June, 2021, and when I finish voicing over and editing this video, it will be available to view by my Patreon supporters. I don't allow all my videos to be viewed publicly on YouTube, but this series probably will become public on YouTube, but not for another three months. My Patreon supporters will find out on the 17th of June 2021 what the exact problem is. And that's it for this one. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.